It was a night like no other. This is how the birth of Jesus came about. His mother, Mary, was pledged to be married to Joseph. But before they came together, she was found to be with child through the Holy Spirit. Because Joseph, her husband, was a righteous man and did not want to expose her to public disgrace, he had in mind to divorce her quietly. After he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, because what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world. And everyone went to his own town to register. Joseph also went up from Nazareth in Galilee to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and the line of David. He went there to register with Mary, who was pledged to be married to him, but was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in clothes and placed him in a manger because there was no room for them in the inn. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will be with child and will give birth to a son. And they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us.
Rejoice in air so sweetly, receive in heaven's glory the night that Christ was born. Came to see the people coming from every nation, pleading for salvation the night that Christ was born. What powerful words. People coming from every nation pleading for salvation. Born in a manger so that I can share his favor and my heart be made new. We are all familiar with this next group of songs. Hark the herald angels sing. Angels from the realms of glory. O come all ye faithful and angels we have heard on high. You know in 1750... A man named John Wade had the job of recovering forgotten literature for the Catholic Church. As he read and copied many old writings, he was inspired to begin writing new hymns and composed the first version of what we now sing, O Come, All Ye Faithful. And until Bean Crosby sang White Christmas, O Come, All Ye Faithful was considered America's most beloved Christmas song. Many images accompany Christmas, fun and frolic, snow and decorations, laughter and family gatherings, images so ingrained in most people's minds that they find it difficult to imagine the holiday any other way. Yet, in truth, Christmas only recently became the festive holiday that we now cherish. For almost 1,500 years, the observation of the birth of Jesus was not recognized on every street corner but left to divinely called men who led a hard 
and demanding life, toiling in poverty and serving people who understood little about the most elementary facets of Scripture and the life of the soul. Yet these men stayed the course and left their fingerprints on every church of every denomination in the world today. Monks were and still very solitary men, dedicating every ounce of their being to the Lord and giving up their own families to serve the family of God. And at times, their voices were often the only ones who told of the birth of Christ and their lives the only examples of the Christian faith. Even to those who knew them, monks were mysterious figures. Their world was one of sacrifice, their sense of duty second only to their humble spirit. Yet from this spirit and life came one of the most beautiful and soaring carols of Christmas, angels we have heard on high. The song's four verses embrace the angel's visit to the lowly shepherds and the shepherd's response. For many biblical scholars, the angels coming to men who worked menial jobs in the fields and informing them of the birth of the Son of God symbolizes that Christ came for all people, rich or poor, humble or powerful. The angel's words in Luke 2, Fear not, for behold, I bring you good tidings of great joy, which shall be to all people. Paired with Jesus' own parables concerning shepherds and their flocks, symbolizes that it must and that it would be the common man and not kings or religious leaders who would first carry the story of Jesus to the masses. The story of the shepherds is easily identified in the verses, but the chorus of the song seems to keep many people wondering. Gloria in excelsis Deo. Well, in English, that simply means glory to God in the highest. While most modern carols move up and down and cover at least an octave and a half, thus testing the vocal range of the average singer, the phrase, Gloria in excelsis Deo, barely moves at all. In addition, the melody used by the song never strays more than one octave, and the verse moves through only six notes. This simplicity seems to tie the melody to early chants used by monks and taught to their congregation. Webster defines a chant as signing or speaking in a monotone to a hymn like repetitive melody. Using this approach, important elements of worship were passed on from person to person and generation to generation in the oral tradition. In a day when few words were read, much less music, chants helped keep the gospel alive among the common people. Of all the carols born in the chanting tradition, Angels We Have Heard on High was one of the easiest and least challenging, despite the fact that the word Gloria covers three measures and hits almost 20 different notes. Unlike others, which failed to inspire as they taught, this song lifted the hearts while telling the story. As we sing this next song, sing with us and think about the beauty of our freedom to worship Christ. And let's come all ye faithful.
Born in 1674, Isaac Watts was a rebellious Protestant. Being raised in a religious home, he was saddened by the traditional, monotonous, and uninspired church music. Isaac complained in secret to his father, and his father encouraged him, Do something about it, son. Upon this challenge, Isaac wrote over 600 hymns and hundreds of other poems. But for a long time, his work was met with contempt, and the church would not adopt his style. But in 1719, he published a hymn book with classics we all know well. We're marching on to Zion. When I survey the wondrous cross, at the cross, and this is the day that the Lord has made. But it wasn't until 1911, when Elise Stevenson, who had scored huge success in the charts during the early days of records hit number five on the charts with the song written by Isaac Watts some 200 years before. It remains a mystery how this hymn became even known as a Christmas carol. Inspired by Old Testament scripture, with no words alluding to the birth of Jesus other than the phrase, the Lord has come, joy to the world would seem to be a song for all seasons, something to be sung in July as much as December. Nevertheless, for some reason, Americans embraced joy to the world as a holiday standard. Perhaps because of its jubilant spirit, it just felt like a Christmas song. We should remember that Christians should exude joy each and every day because the Lord is come.
Jesus has come. Joy to the world. Besides Christmas, what is your favorite day of the year? That's right. For most of you would agree that it's your birthday. Have you ever wondered why your birthday and Christmas seem to be your two happiest days of the year? Well, wonder no more. It's because you get presents. Ah, secrets out. Sorry. We all like to get presents. But I was wondering the other day, why do we give presents? Why these two days out of the year do we give presents? Well, of course the Bible tells us in chapter 2 of Matthew that there were these wise guys, I mean wise men from the east, and they were looking for this baby that they call the king of the Jews. They followed the star of God that God provided until the day that they found the child and his mother Mary, and they fell on their knees and they worshipped. They opened their treasures and they presented him with gifts, gold, frankincense, and myrrh. God gave us a present too. Romans 6.23 says, For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life in Jesus Christ our Lord. Tonight, let's celebrate the birthday of our Lord and give him our present, our hearts. <laughs>
love you, Jesus. This next group of songs should be familiar to all of you. Away in a manger, Silent Night, O Holy Night. Even though Silent Night has been recorded more than any other song in history, the fact that we even know the song at all is a miracle. Created out of necessity and performed in a tiny village on a solitary Christmas Eve by two ordinary Australians and a tiny choir, this incredibly beautiful and simple carol owes its debut to an organ that wouldn't play and a priest who wouldn't have a Christmas Eve service without special music. Later, just weeks into the new year, the Beloved's Carol March to, the, to worldwide popularity was begun by the man who came to fix that faulty instrument. It all started with a man, 25-year-old Joseph Moore, was in charge of the music for St. Nicholas Church in Austria. In 1818, he was making last-minute preparations for the Christmas Eve Mass, a service he had been planning for months. As he readied the sanctuary, he realized the organ would not play. He frantically worked and tried to fix it for hours, but he finally decided it was a no-go. He then pauses and he prays for inspiration. He asks God to show him a way to bring music to his congregation on the year's most meaningful day of worship. He remembers writing a poem two years prior and takes it to his organist's house. And he asks him, says, can you write music for this poem that could be played on the guitar and learned by the choir that day? Well, that night... Just after midnight, the song Silent Night, Holy Night was sung by that tiny church in Austria. A couple weeks later, Moore told this story and sung the song to the organ repairman. That man jotted down the words and he learned the melody and he began to share it with all of the churches that he visited to repair their organs. And in 1839, that song traveled to America and answered a prayer Few words have better captured the story of a Savior born in a manger than Silent Night. Sing with us tonight as we worship our Savior.
Look up, fear not, the angel said, Behold the Messiah's come, the one of whom you've read. And as they spoke to men that day, the heavenly host around the throne joined in to say, Glory to God in the highest, peace on earth, goodwill to men. Heavenly angels announced his arrival in the little town of Bethlehem. Hallelujah to the Lord, sing holy, he was born to save the world from sin. Glory to God in the highest, glory, hallelujah to the Lord, amen. And still today the wise men come. Offering their praise to God's anointed one. And as they go, their hearts felt love. This glorious sound was on my ear from up above. Glory to God in the highest, peace on earth, goodwill to men. Heavenly angels announce his arrival in the little town of Bethlehem. Hallelujah to the Lord, sing holy, he was born to save the world from sin. Glory to God in the highest glory, hallelujah to the Lord, amen. Sing glory to glory to God in the highest, peace on earth, good will to men. Heavenly angels announce his arrival in the little town of Bethlehem. Hallelujah to the Lord, sing holy, he was born to save the world from sin. Glory to God in the highest glory, hallelujah to the Lord, amen. Glory to God in the highest, peace on earth, goodwill to men. Heavenly angels announce his arrival in the little town of Bethlehem. Hallelujah to the Lord, sing holy, he was born to save the world from sin. Glory to God in the highest, glory, hallelujah to the Lord, amen. Hallelujah to the Lord, sing holy, he was born to save the world from sin. Glory to God in the highest, glory, glory. Glory to God in the highest glory, hallelujah to the Lord, amen, 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 amen. Glory to God in the highest. Well, the God did come from heaven to earth to save us from our sin. The question is just this tonight. Has he saved you from your sin? Is this a Christmas that you can celebrate because Jesus Christ is your personal Lord and Savior? If he is, would you say amen tonight? Amen. If he's not, you can call on his name this very evening understanding that you are a sinner just like all of us and you are in need of a savior and the only savior is jesus christ the perfect lamb of god who hung on a cross to pay for your sin and to pay for my sin and when he was punished for that sin he died and yet the grave could not hold him he rose again on the third day to prove that god's wrath that was on us had been removed that we had been forgiven or could be forgiven if we would yet call upon his precious name would you call on his name tonight would you ask him to forgive you of all of your sins so that he might be your personal Lord and Savior let's pause right now just to allow someone tonight to make that decision and if you do We'd love to talk to you a little bit later after this uh, presentation is over and maybe during the time of fellowship. So let's go to the Lord in prayer. Would you bow with me? And if Jesus Christ is right now your personal Lord and Savior, you just thank him. But if you would like to make him your personal Lord and Savior, would you just say this prayer tonight? Dear Lord Jesus, through the singing of the songs, through the narration I have understood that I'm a sinner and I'm in need of a Savior. And I have understood tonight that you are the only one that can save me.
that your death, burial, and resurrection was full payment for my sin. I believe that tonight. And I'm asking you, Lord Jesus, to forgive me of those sins. To come into my heart. And to lead me every day until you take me to heaven. If you prayed that prayer tonight, by the authority based on God's scripture, he says that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. And I promise you this will be the greatest Christmas you ever lived. Father, thank you for what we've already experienced and we know it's not over yet. Lord, may you be magnified in this last song this evening as we pray in Jesus' name. Amen.
Wow, great job, great job. We would like to extend an invitation to you tonight to our fellowship, and that is right through those doors on back into our fellowship hall. And we'd love to uh, honor our senior adults tonight, let you go through the line, our guests as well, go through first and get your food and, and have a seat and just enjoy some sweet time of fellowship around the tables tonight. Let's close this evening in prayer and ask God's blessing on our food tonight. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you for Grace Baptist Church Choir and all the work and the preparation to bring you glory and honor tonight. And I, I just believe it was well received in heaven. And, and, I, and I pray, Lord, that uh, you were blessed because of it. And Lord, tonight uh, we want to continue to enjoy this evening with one another. Lord, thank you for those that have brought, that have spent this afternoon maybe preparing and cooking so that we might enjoy this food that will be before us tonight. And Lord, as we take